The conference championship games are in the books, and there's a lot of controversy around the college football playoff, but we're not here to talk about that today. We're here to talk about what draft eligible prospects help their stock and hurt their stock. Welcome to the Stock Report, and what's crack a lacking? It's your boy, Bro Schmo. Just in case you did not know, so go ahead, come bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below where we have that nice, a beautiful football discourse. Let's get this sucker started the only way we know how with Maction with Brian Ugwu out of Miami, Ohio. He took on Toledo in the MAC championship game and they came away the victors. And he had a phenomenal game coming in at 6'3", 250 pounds. He had 11 pressures in this stinking game. And I remember watching it, uh, I, during the watch along, I was watching it on my phone while we were watching the, uh, I guess it was the Texas uh, Oklahoma State game. And I was just seeing th this cat. What's his number? I think it was eight. I think he's number eight. Yeah, he was number eight. And this cat just, how, like the closing speed on that guy. He was constantly in the backfield because, I mean, Toledo, they, they got a quarterback that's a bit of a dual threat. So they run a lot of uh, like read option and such trying and, and bootlegs and whatnot just trying to get them get him get basically use the quarterback for toledo finn his mobility and this cat was just honing in on him i was like golly i got i, got, I gotta write this cat's name down he's been having a big year so he was already on my uh watch list for later this year and Going a little bit more into him, I went back to that game, and he's just impressive. He really, really, really is. Like, his get-off, great. His closing speed, great. Like, you get this guy in a straight line, and if you are in his sights, you're almost done, man. He just gets to the backfield in a hurry. One thing I did notice was, like, he slips off a lot of tackles, and I was like, okay, does this match up? Okay, 21.2%. Miss tackle rate, it matches up. He could be a better finisher. Uh, but I I just I I I just like this cat, man. He he looks like he's got really, really burly. Is that the word I'm looking for? Upper uh like a real burly upper body. Uh he showed some good power. Uh he, he just looks like a cat that he does a good job of essentially setting the edge and being like a backside. Uh, defender and he does a good job of controlling engagement he's very sudden very violent with his hands and i just like that he plays real low like uh very underrated like bull uh bull rush from this guy he's really good at just dipping under uh blockers and getting back there he has 58 pressures on the season kind of a ludicrous number uh some of the things i didn't notice though was yeah you, you go back you look at his pass rush win rate for the season it's like nine percent and it's like, okay, he does get stuck on engagement somewhat, quite a bit. Also, he, he does take on a lot of double teams with something, at least I noticed in the Toledo game. And you just see that this cat doesn't necessarily have many counters or secondary moves. Uh, if his initial rush is like impeded, then he's almost kind of out of the play to some regard, but he, he, plays, with a, he plays with a big motor a uh, good amount of grit so he's never truly out of the play and i don't know if he's gonna be the most flexible guy in this class like not the most bendy so we might be talking about someone who needs to line up at like the seven tech or even like y9 if he's truly gonna get into the backfield i can't i right now like him as like a mid to late day three option uh and i was going through some of the stuff he actually was initially at rutgers before uh, coming to Miami, Ohio, and he just didn't play for like three seasons there. I think he played a total of three games with Rutgers and finally had it. I was like, I'm going to get out of here and actually play some football. He's been with uh, Miami, Ohio for the last two seasons, but he was he was definitely the cat that was catching my eye the most in that game. Let's keep, th let's keep this sucker moving. Let's go to the ACC championship game and talk defense. And I want to first got to talk about my boy Jared Verse. Y'all, if you're not new to the channel, you know I'm a big mark for Jared Verse. Ever since uh, last season, he was he was like number 10, my 10th edge rusher in my 
my summer rankings going into the 2022 season. Like, man, I feel good. Like just seeing the spring practice of this, this guy, he's coming from Albany, but man, dude gets after it. He's put a lot of muscle on it. He's like just jacked the gill and just emerged as one of the best edge rushers last season. And then this year he's really turned it on. Like during the last stretch, like you look at like maybe the wake forest game is when he kind of, he's like when he's come alive, it would, and that was back in like week nine. He's had a really strong end to the season. He had eight pressures, three sacks against Florida. And then against Louisville, he had nine pressures and three sacks. He was just utterly phenomenal. He was a big part of him and the next guy I'm going to talk about. He was just a big part of why Florida State was in that game for so long. Like the, the As a whole, the Florida State defense just utterly shut down uh the the that louisville offense and louisville was a top 20 offense at the end of the game i think people forget that like all oh, louisville's trash blah 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 they lost in like in the last two minutes like kentucky kentucky fairly a fairly solid enough sec team and i mean louisville was also beat Notre dame this year so it's like well we gotta throw some respect on louisville's name but verse I, i'm a big fan uh he's he's gonna be in that edge one mix for me uh i think he's got one of the best bull rushes in this class i i like the combination of quicks get off length and i think he's i think this year he he really became more balanced as a player so a get used to jared verse seeing him back in the top 10 of mocks uh i honestly don't think he should fall past like pick 15 but hey it's the nfl draft good players fall great players fall that's just what happens but the next player i have on this list is from the same game it's brayden fisk out of florida state had himself a big game where he had three pressures three sacks he had seven defensive stops which essentially is a uh a play resulted in negative to no gain just phenomenal. He was very phenomenal. 6'5, 297 pounds. This is actually his first season at Florida State. Excuse me. Initially coming from the Mac at uh, Western Michigan there. But golly, he is, I believe, a six year player. He is a six year player because of the Rona year. He also redshirted his freshman season. He was a three star recruit out of the 2018 class but oh my gosh this guy has probably the one of the biggest motors you will see like he never stops he consistently will fight and find a way to get to the football he 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 rallies so hard to defeat blocks and you just love the like he plays in a very sudden a very violent manner uh someone despite his height actually plays low and gets good leverage and he just plays with an urgency and a hustle that not a lot of other players are going to match, man. And he's someone who has played all along the uh, defensive line, whether it was for Florida State or uh, back at uh, Western Michigan. The things that I get caught up with, because uh, admittedly, I wasn't still not. I'm probably going to have him in the midday three area for now, maybe maybe rise him up a bit further but some of the things i was like oh, okay he's kind of he's he's an average athlete like he just plays with a lot of hustle and a lot of ferociousness like and i mean you actually can see that there, there are cases where he just plays so out of control he finds himself on the turf uh also he kind of lacks ideal length and it, it does cause him to get stonewalled on his pass rushes quite a bit but Man, he's going to the senior bowl. I can't wait. I really can't. He, I think he, he's another cat that has done quite a bit for his stock, and uh, I'm gonna end up have. Uh, I'm gonna end up ha having. I'm, I think I've already moved him a couple of spots in terms of the uh, on the my defensive interior rankings. But yeah, man, good on Fisk. It was a flipping phenomenal game from him. Okay, we're going to go to the SEC championship game, and I'm going to talk about Javon Bullard for a little bit. Bullard had a banger 
of a game where he had eight tackles. Felt like he was everywhere. Two defensive stops. He had two pass breakups. Only allowed one reception that went for 12 yards. It was a great, great outing despite the loss. Uh, I think he is probably the top slot corner in this class. Uh, he may be a little undersized. Then again, I mean, I... I feel like he's someone you could maybe even play on the outside, but he he is a tad under. I say a tad undersized, man. This guy's, I think he put on 10 pounds during the season, but I don't know. He's been almost exclusively used uh, this year or in past years in the slot. This year he's been used kind of everywhere, not everywhere, not necessarily on the outside, but He's been using the slot. He's been using the box. He's been used deep. So I, I think he's got some flexibility to him. I really, really do. But I, I think his best spot in the NFL will be in the slot because uh, he plays with just great physicality. He flies everywhere. He, he is sideline to sideline. He will. Uh, he has a nose for the football. He will find it and he will knock it loose. He had a forced fumble in this game, too. I didn't even put that on the stash sheet. Uh I just really, really like this cat. And, uh, man, I don't know. I don't know if it's top 50, but he's going to be hovering around my top 50. He's been that darn good. I'm kind of curious uh, if he'll go to a an all-star bowl because I would love to see him get played a bit on the outside when you do go, like, look at it. He, he has only played 28 times. Um, on the on the outside so at that like boundary corner position or per perimeter corner however you want to refer to it so very interesting but uh in a losing effort uh this cat wasn't to blame in my opinion all right we're gonna jump to the pac-12 championship game and i'm gonna talk about jackson powers johnson he is my top center i got him at 6'3. 320 didn't allow pressure, didn't allow a sack in this game. Utterly dominant. He is my top center, and I'm going to be honest, it's not even close. He's going to be a top 40 prospect for me, and I am absolutely in love with, with him. He is, he is stupid strong, like legit, pure meat, pure power. He can displace... Uh, 300 pounders 350 pounders if he pleases he's got that kind of power man it's all built along his frame and he plays with that nasty the nfl's gonna love um he doesn't necessarily need to be like the most elite athlete like i think he does an effective enough job uh effective enough job as a puller uh like again not like high-end foot speed here but again don't really need it when you're on the interior you don't you can be a little bit more limited as an athlete and get away with it. And I think that'll be fine. Again, he's had a phenomenal year. He's only allowed one pressure all season. That's been great. If I wanted to really nitpick, uh, I think he's been called for a couple of, like the penalties, they, they are kind of up there, nine penalties on the season. But at the end of the day, man, I'll live with that. I think I, I just had him in my mock draft like as a first rounder and really that's just to kind of put eyes on him i think i feel better about him in like early to mid second round uh but if he does sneak into the first i will i will have no problem with it do want to give a shout out to troy fatanyu who had a pretty solid game in his own right someone who is moved up my boards from uh summer scouting quite a bit uh because I initially had him as a tackle. And I was like, oh, yeah, probably should move into guard. But, like, he's been holding up so well at tackle this season. Uh, but, again, he, he is a guy that I do think ends up moving to, moving to guard in the NFL. And I think it would be a very, very good one. So, I don't know, man. Th th honestly, this offensive line class, it is, it is mwah, muy bien, please. Uh, I am going to stick with the offensive line real quick, going back to the SEC championship game. Uh, talk about Armarius Mims coming in at 6'7", 340. He's a guy that you commonly see in first-round mocks usually. 
Uh, he only played 11 snaps in this game. Uh, he he re-aggravated the ankle, and I just don't. Depending if he could, well, shoot, the, Georgia didn't even make the playoff, so he'll be taking on Florida State with Florida State. Actually, that's a pretty that's a pretty good test for him. So if he could come back healthy, like that game could put him, could be like a nice swan song, but. I mean, the dude's young enough. I do, I do think he might end up coming back again. Like uh, he had the ankle injury, had the tightrope sur tight rope surgery, came back from it, and honestly, he, he has been really good since coming back in the old Miss game. Uh, during that four-game stretch, he only allowed one pressure. Uh, you've seen what you, he could do as a run blocker, and someone that just kind of it feels like needs more experience and just needs a little bit more polish on his game which kind of comes with more experience so i'm kind of curious if he decides to maybe return uh with a shot of being ot1 in 2025 so if that, that one's gonna be very interesting very interesting but uh, i feel like i had to bring it up with him going down broke my heart because i remember during the stream i was like man i wonder how Mar marius mims has been doing i guess because I, I guess uh chris braswell was facing off with him uh, at least at the beginning of that game and i was like man i i don't think i don't think mims is in here so that that was a little sad a little depressing here let me get go jumping forward listen i know you love the nfl draft as much as i do and you're gonna want a nice hefty watch list of players during this college football season well go ahead check out my draft guide you can purchase it for only 30 bucks by venmoing or paypaling me links in the description it's a one-time payment and you get it for this whole draft cycle and forever and always technically it's a google spreadsheet so send me your email when you send the payment i'll get you hooked up you will see my current prospect rankings and big board my full evals and guess what it updates throughout the whole draft cycle so it's a great purchase and it's a great way to support the channel so we're traveling to the Sun Belt for this one as I got Kamani Vidal out of a Troy. He is their running back and he has had an electric season where he's put up almost 1,600 yards. He had 233 in this game along with five touchdowns. Put him at 14 on the season. And boy, oh, stinking boy. He was, he was fun. So He's coming in at what, like 5'8", 282. So you already know this is a guy working with a lower center of gravity who's working with just that natural low leverage. So he's probably going to have pretty good contact balance. I think he's leads. If not leads, he's up there in college football in terms of force missed tackles. Currently has 81 on the season. So yeah, okay. Guy that can, guy that can stay up after contact. And then watching this game, man, this is a guy that just, this cat runs through arm tackles like nothing. Uh, if you hit him high, then good luck. He's probably not going to the ground. Like, I was just very impressed with the, the contact balance and just his ability to keep his feet moving through contact. Uh, I will say this, because, like, you may look at, it like, a Bucky Irvin out of Oregon as maybe a similar prospect, though I think there's, like, about 20 pounds between them uh but again th these prospects that have these lower center of gravities and he just he doesn't have the same type of quicks or explosiveness uh you just for for a guy who is a shorter back uh just doesn't have that long speed and such again you're, not, you're gonna be working with a uh smaller strides uh but you you love how he eats contact you really really do I, I love the patience i love the vision i think he's someone that could probably run behind any scheme i think troy's actually pretty diverse with their scheme between like gap and zone and he's actually been a very good pass uh protector this season like he does a good job of recognizing and picking up blitzes he's a very willing uh blocker if anything he's just not it's not like this cat has a lot of drops but he, he is very much a body catcher and being um on the short side yeah the length isn't great with him so he doesn't have like a big catch raise so i don't know how much of damage he will really do in the passing game but if he's able to be a good pass blocker there's a place for him in the league uh i think i have him as like a late day three maybe priority udfa 
Uh, he could, quite frankly, come back. I think he probably gets an extra year because of the Rona that happened during his um, freshman season. So maybe we see him next year as a fifth-year senior. Uh, I don't know if that will really change his draft projection because, uh, I mean, he's already had two banger years at Troy. Just come out, like, just come out now, unless they're paying you good NIL money. Just come out now and maybe make a name for yourself on the all-star circuit. Uh, but yeah, I had to give him a shout out because uh, it's a hell of an impressive year for him. Really, really is. All right, we're going to the Big 12 championship game. I'm talking to Tavion Sanders. Probably if he decides to come back, come back. He solidified, uh, solidified himself as tight end too. I really do think he he did that. I mean, again, you just see the ability as a pass catcher, as a receiver. It, it, it's very, very nice, man. It really, really is. He does a great job of creating separation uh, in tight coverage, and he knows how to use his hands discreetly. He's got good hand-eye, uh, hand ball coordination. Uh, no drops this season. I mean, I'm not going to pretend like it's been, like, like best year but i think he's been relatively solid he's 50 percent on contested catches that's solid as well so it's like uh, i think uh what is down for him this year it might be the force miss tackles only four but he only had seven last year so it's not like he was a guy that he's not a guy that creates after the catch like he's not a guy that creates after contact i should say it's more so like, hey, I'm a stupid good athlete for the position. So, aha, me faster than you. But I, I don't know. I, I think he could probably come out, still be in this like top 60 fold. Uh, it, it's just the tight end class is so so weak sauce. It, it's literally Brock Bowers. And in my opinion, Sanders. And then, and then we could talk about the rest of the class. Then we can have a conversation about the rest of the class. That's just kind of how I see this class right now, but I had to give him a shout out. I think this was probably his best game of the season. Ah, oh, it's up there. He had a really good game uh, er, early. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, he had the good game against Bama. Forgot about that. But I had to give him the shout out. Uh, we're gonna stick with pass catchers. And I'm gonna talk about Jalen McMillan. Finally, man. Probably his best game of the year, or at least his best game. Uh, since like early in the year and it came in the Pac-12 championship game when his team needed it. He came down with nine receptions for over 131 yards. Uh, someone who he is going to be one of the more premier slot receivers in this class. And I truly mean slot only over the course of his career. I think he's been in, in the slot or lined up at the slot about 90% of the time. Uh, someone who just, I don't think will be able to, to handle press he's got it feels like a slim frame though like you look at 61192 uh, it's and you don't think of it as slim but when you look at him it's like oh yeah he's kind of slender uh so not not someone that's gonna be uh it's not someone who can handle physicality during the route or at the line consistently so you give him that free release and allow him to use that blazing speed like he he is someone who tracks the ball well uh he can high point the football does a good job of uh making catches away from his body though this season the drops were up a bit uh to be fair like two of, two of his five drops this year came in a against oregon and that 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 game was like the rain was coming down it was a very sloppy game all around for the washington offense uh, but uh, McMillan, man, uh, I mean, we came in the season talking about him as a day two, and I don't know, I don't have him there right now because just this wide receiver class is so studded, but I definitely see him in that early day three mix, man. I think he's shown enough to be like, yeah, no, he, he he's good. He's good. I wonder if he comes back. That's going to be the question. Like how, how we, we know Penix and Odunze, uh, even Polk are probably all gone. Like, how much does that offense come 
back because they, they got some stud they, they got they still got some good players there and they're also i imagine um they're gonna have an easier time uh bringing cats in through the transfer portal now that they're a big 10 school to end off this video i kind of want to cover the draft eligible quarterbacks that played this weekend because there were actually quite a few and that's why i'm starting here at the pac 12 as we got bo Nix and michael Penix, and i thought both played exceptionally exceptionally well you had uh this felt like a heavyweight matchup for washington got up early but oh here comes bo Nix leading his, leading his team back and then taking the lead uh just for Penix to seal it away near the end of that game uh, i thought both had tremendous games and they showed why people are talking about them uh in in as potential first rounders if not fringe first rounders like i know some of y'all know i'm a bit higher on bo Nix than i am michael Penix, but i don't think there's too much that separates the two but i think they i think these two probably had i would say the best games this past weekend let's kind of go over some uh some of the other some of the other cats that were playing this week i mean i think i'm gonna just go ahead and jump to the sec championship game talk about carson uh carson beck and jalen milrow and i'm gonna be frank i think both these guys should stay like milrow's starting to blossom but in terms of throw to throw bases like his ball accuracy his ball placement it's all over the place he had a just a completion percentage in this game of 59.1 percent but it's his ability as an athlete it's his his uh freaking rocket launcher attached to his arm that makes him such a ooh toolsy prospect that it makes you go ooh. so i think another year of just kind of letting him saute i don't know if that it's a term i should be using but marinate in the oven so to speak as a starter there for alabama and carson beck i don't know just kind of felt like a middling performance from him he was under pressure uh at, at parts in this game and i felt like he forced a couple of these throws but for the most part i think he did a good job of keeping his team in it uh but i, I, I don't know i came away maybe wanting to see another year as a starter from both these guys so maybe they come out in 2025 i don't know we shall see let's go ahead and move to the let's let's go to the big uh go to the big 10 championship game let's talk about jj mccarthy because i know a lot of people are going to be like uh a lot, a lot of people think he's a first round talent and i don't disagree i think he is a first round talent i just want i feel like we just need to see more of him at this point i look at him like uh probably a developmental guy like he didn't really do anything in this game to show hey he's a first rounder like we know he's got the tools he's got the arm but I want to like, and I mean, he's executing what he's asked. But look at that average, like the, his average per throw, 4.9. What was his average depth of target was six yards in this game? Like, yeah, they're not really asking him to do much. I mean, shoot, people criticize stinking Bo Nix. He had a higher average depth of target against Washington. So like... I get it with J.J. McCarthy. I don't think we've seen enough, man. We just haven't seen enough. Maybe we'll see it in the playoffs. Maybe there will be a point, maybe against Alabama or in the national championship game, where he does have to backpack the team and show the world what he is made of. And if he does that, then yeah, we're probably talking about a first rounder. Like, no one's going to deny, no one's going to uh, take away his ability. Because we know it's first round ability. We just... I haven't really haven't really seen it let's go to the uh big 12 championship game uh quinn ewers people were going nuts over quinn ewers performance and it was a good performance dude put over put up over 450 yards uh i had four tutties yeah he played hecka good uh also didn't put the ball in harm's way there was like one time but like in all honesty i i thought I thought he did a relatively good job. He was very accurate with the football, though. I mean, that 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 is a team that they like to throw their fair share of uh, 
screens and whatnot. Star uh, Starkeesian's um, really good at scheming stuff up. But when they needed him to make those throws downfield, he did. He did. He did a good job. So, pretty I I don't know if uh, if a strong playoff run, maybe if he out duels Michael Penix and carries the horns to a very good championship game. Is that enough to get him get him back in to get him in the first round area? I don't believe so, but I don't know, man. We'll, maybe we'll feel different if we see it. But I do feel like maybe he has another year at Texas. A uh, couple of other performances I kind of want to talk about. There's really just one. It's Michael Pratt. They ended up going down against uh, SMU. And he didn't have the best game, but also felt like he was trying to... I felt like he was probably... Like, that, that offense was stagnant at points. And it's like, how... How are we playing wire to wire with SMU who just lost their starting quarterback uh, the game prior? So I feel like he may have forced some throws, but like ended up having a 75% adjusted completion percentage. That's pretty solid. Uh, he was being let down by his receivers here and there. Uh, three drops by his receivers on 36 thrown balls. Uh, it's a little high, but... Uh, yeah, I feel like he's going to need a strong off, like all-star circuit, uh, to be anything more than like a early day three, kind of where I have him in that fourth round area, but Hey, we'll see. But, uh, that's it for the video. Go ahead. Do that. YouTube thing as always until next time. You be easy, my friends later.